So I'm scrolling through Twitter looking for my daily dose of carnage just to spice things up a bit and I stumble across this video from Jeremy Hunt. Hi, can I get a flat white please? And boy, is it good. Today, we're gonna to do the classic YouTuber thing and just react to this. Because Jeremy is using the medium of coffee here to explain how the government plans to halve inflation over the next year, which is the number one priority on Rishi's to-do list. I'm going to add further context and explanation where I feel it's appropriate, while also adding detail where I think it's been missed out. Let's just get started, shall we? While my coffee is being made, let me tell you what we're doing to halve inflation. I'm afraid coffee is getting more expensive. A year ago, it would have been around £2.50, but now it's gone up to nearly £3 a cup. So what we have here, guys, is your classic ball and cup magic trick setup. You know the one, where's the ball and all that. But instead of a ball, Jeremy plans to make inflation disappear with these cups. You have our attention, Jeremy. Please continue. There are lots of reasons why inflation has risen. One of them is COVID. When we found a vaccine and came out of lockdown, Global supply chains struggled to cope, and that pushed prices up. Another is Putin's invasion of Ukraine, which pushed global gas prices to their highest ever levels. And finally, even after gas prices have started to come down, economists say that energy prices will remain high for some time. Is that it? So inflation is solely down to a virus, Putin, and that boat that got stuck. Look, I'm being flippant, but it's to demonstrate a point. All those things are indeed factors that have fed into inflation, but there is just so much more they're not discussing here. And you kind of have to ask yourself why. First up, loose monetary and fiscal policy in response to COVID. To say COVID caused inflation, that a virus made prices rise is a bit much. It was the government and central bank's reaction to COVID that caused inflation. 450 billion pounds of quantitative easing in the UK, furlough money, eat out to help out, the trussing. If you just do the equivalent of dumping more money into the system, what happens, Jeremy? The pound in your pocket is worth less. We must also acknowledge the collapse in the pound's value on the world stage as a result of a falling confidence in our economy that led to inflation. When you get lines that go down vertically like that, that's quite unusual. We import stuff like oil and we have to pay for that in dollars. If the pound falls, it means that that costs us more, relatively speaking, to buy those goods. And thus, when we buy them, inflation rises as the price has gone up. But I guess the shocking decisions of our predecessors is pretty hard to write on a coffee cup. So let's just call it COVID. Now, finally, there's an elephant in the room and no politician ever wants to speak about it or address it. But on this channel, I'm always gonna present you the data as I see it because to do anything else is a disservice to you. So please just don't shout at me. I'm not shouting! So besides what happened with Liz Truss, all these other inflation causing events are global events, right? Everyone got COVID, everyone got loose with their purse strings in response, and most countries have been impacted in some way by Russia's actions. One thing that we have that is unique to us, that impacts us and doesn't impact other countries, is Brexit. I don't care what you voted for, but the facts are that leaving the EU has made it harder in the short term and more expensive to trade with Europe. Jeremy blames this on supply chains. Well, a big part of that supply chain is how goods and services move around Europe. And by leaving the EU, we've made that harder for businesses and increased the cost. And that cost has been passed on to consumers and that is inflationary in its nature. As well as that, there's been a fall in investment into the UK as the picture around post-Brexit UK remains unclear. Maybe in time we'll strike better deals with countries and this will help, but short term, the impact of leaving the EU has been inflationary and has cost the UK public money. The London School of Economics has estimated that the cost was around 5.8 billion by the end of 2021. That is around 86 pound for every man, woman and child in the UK. Many people feel that the campaigns around the reasons for leaving Europe were dishonest. But the fact is, now that it's happened and no politician is willing to clearly state what the impacts are, I think that's just as bad in my opinion. And really, it kind of sums up this section of the video. Jeremy here is passing the blame onto external factors without taking any responsibility at all for the forces inside of the UK that have pushed prices up. Financial support in COVID for families like furlough were needed. But don't just ignore it, be honest. Say, look, we had to help, but that has caused inflation. Right, what next, Jeremy? And all that means that the price of a cup of coffee has gone up. I can confirm that coffee is indeed more expensive. I've got like a cafetiere thing, and now every time I buy a bag of coffee, it's like five quid, so it's costing me loads per drink. But I tell you what doesn't cost loads per drink, Huel, who are today's video sponsor. I'm honestly excited about this one, guys, because I drink at least one Huel a day. Hold on, rather than me telling you, let me show you. Might bump into Cobweb on the way, hopefully, as well. He's normally floating about. Just need to take you to the kitchen. Oh, hello, Cobweb. 
How are you, mate? Yeah, you're gonna come help out? Let's get some light on. Let's go. So yeah, I have literally got a huge cupboard. No word of a lie, I'm not messing about here. I mean, look, there's empty bags in here. I love the stuff that much. Recently, I've been loving this Huel Essential. It's a 100% nutritionally complete meal you can make in seconds. Pro tip, put the water in before the powder. So all you need to do to make this is take the scoop that's provided and just add two scoops to the shaker. It's vegan, contains 20 grams of protein and 26 vitamins and minerals. You get it in chocolate and vanilla flavors. This one's vanilla. Screw the lid on and check the top. Then just give it a good shake. Packet says 10 seconds, but you know I got that power. So yeah, quick blast and it's done. But the thing I like most about Huel Essential is it only costs a pound a meal, which is a hell of a lot cheaper than a Jeremy Hunt coffee. So get your Huel Essential using the link in the description. And I've also pinned one in the top comment for you. Right, thanks for that. Okay, now it's time to look at the ways they plan to fix inflation. Well, we are investing a lot of money in renewable and nuclear power. Uh, question, we're gonna have them nuclear power stations finished by summer, are we, Jeremy? I'm not being funny, right? But the M6 motorway has had roadworks on it Basically my whole life. I'm just not so confident in your build schedule here, mate. Worldnuclear.org says it takes around five years to build a nuclear power plant. So what impact that will have towards your goal of halving inflation in the next 12 months, I have no idea. We're investing a lot in a national energy efficiency program, so we use less energy and help prevent climate change. I want to draw your attention to an article published by The Guardian about nine months ago. They basically <laughs> argued that David Cameron's decision to cut green crap policies is a big factor in rising energy bills recently. At the time, the decision was made to end onshore wind projects in England, cut solar subsidies and slash energy efficiency. So now Jeremy is saying we'll look to do the opposite. The problem is, like the nuclear, this is shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted. We needed to commit to being self-sufficient energy-wise years ago to see the benefits today. I cannot for the life of me see how these projects are going to impact the rate of inflation over the next 12 months. But okay, Jeremy, what else you got for us? And we've taken very difficult decisions to balance the nation's books so that markets have confidence and don't punish the UK with higher interest rates that mean families with mortgages have to pay more. Simple sentence, but an absolute load to unpack here. Very difficult decisions. It's political speak for public sector cuts and tax rises, and Jeremy seems to like a serving of both with his flat white. We first have fiscal drag, as inflation leads to people needing pay rises in order to keep the same spending power. By keeping tax bans in the same place, by freezing them, what you essentially do is push more people into those higher tax brackets. That leads to a situation where people have had pay rises, but in real terms, they're worse off because their incomes haven't risen enough and similarly, you're taxing them more. In a similar way, by not upping public sector budgets, you have a, the same effect. So inflation, made everything 10% more expensive in a year. So if you don't increase budgets in schools and hospitals and all that by 10%, they've had a 10% cut. Balance the nation's books. But credit where credit's due, these actions are a way that this government are able to influence inflation. By simply reducing the amount of money everyone has to spend, you bring inflation down. So this is an example of something that they're doing that will likely work to influence inflation. It's just not pretty, is it? It's literally more tax and spending cuts in real terms. So let's call it difficult decisions as no one wants to hear tax cuts with their flat white, do they? Now, the video finishes off here. And that's what's happening. And that's our plan. But we ain't done yet because I don't personally think that that's what's happening. I think their plan here is slightly different to the one that they're putting out to the world. I want to call this section taking the credit. So yeah. Rishi has made a pledge to half inflation. Yeah. It's literally top of his list. Have you ever had a boss who takes credit for the work that you do? Yeah. So the Bank of England has already forecasted that inflation will come down. Also consider this. I mean, this is taken directly from the Bank of England's website. People measure inflation by comparing the cost of things today to how much they cost a year ago. So when they're saying their target is 5% inflation or half, they mean relative to last year. And the period that they're comparing it to is that period when prices were just skyrocketing, when energy prices were just ramping up really aggressively because of supply shocks and global shortages. So when they're saying 5% inflation, they're comparing it to that period. Do we think a target of 5% inflation on last year's prices with that period in mind is a tough goal? This video and this overall promise of halving inflation to me just comes across like this government wants to take none of the responsibility, but all of the glory. To stand here in January and say, we will make inflation fall over the next year after we've just had record inflation is like me going after the coldest winter on record. I'm gonna make sure that it gets warmer in the summer. 
It's a piece of piss BS target that is almost a foregone conclusion, which I have very little influence over anyway. But you can bet that when it does come down and the inflation figures are lower, Hunt and Rishi are going to come out going, look, we did it. We said we'd do it and we did it. Honestly, look, if you enjoyed this video, you should watch this video next in which I discuss some of the proposals that are being put forward to Jeremy Hunt to cap ISA allowances at 100K total. Yep, 100K total. Thank you.